If some big industrial company or research lab wants to prototype a new road surface or road building method, how do they test that for the long term? Roads need to last decades. How do they simulate hundreds of thousands of vehicles rolling over their new road for years without actually doing that? The answer is something called an accelerated pavement testing facility, and there's only a few in the world. This is one of the largest. It was built in 1984. It's in the west of France, and it's better known as the Fatigue Carousel. The fatigue carousel consists of a central tower with hydraulic motors which run the machine and then it has four arms and outer wheels which load the pavements. A ring is 120 meters in length and the test section is six meters wide. So this machine allows to simulate in a few months 10 or 20 years of traffic on a real road. For a long period, the, the machine was used to validate French pavement materials. And now we are trying to find new applications. Recently, we had a test with the bio binders to replace bitumen because petroleum uh, will in some time disappear. And uh, now there is also a lot of interest for charging electric vehicles by the road. You can tell how heavy those arms are by uh, how much those tires squash at the bottom. Oh. a good noise. The tests are done with the outer wheels at loads corresponding to heavy vehicles, but we can also install on each arm single wheels, dual wheels, or also two axles or three axles. When the machine runs, we can also move the wheels laterally to reproduce the effect of real traffic. And you can also change the loads. On a single axle, we can go from 4.5 tons to about 8.5 tons. So sometimes we can overload the pavement to accelerate deterioration. It takes a few minutes to creep up to speed and it's kind of a little bit unnerving standing here because I, it started off, it's, oh, it's, it's very slow, it's, oh, this is all very safe and now it's, now there's a lot of metal coming towards me, <laughs> faster and faster. This machine can run at about 100 kilometers per hour. The usual testing speed is 70 kilometers per hour because we don't want to go to the maximum, but we can go to 100 kilometers per hour. I thought this was up to speed. And I think it's still getting faster. I've got dust in my eye from the wind. Ah. We instrument usually the soil and also the pavement layers. So in the soil, we put generally our displacement transducers or vertical strain transducers to measure the vertical displacements. And then in the bituminous layers, the most common instrumentation is strain gauges. We use also temperature sensors because temperature variation is very important for the pavement response. And we use also accelerometers or geophones to measure the vertical acceleration and then to get the vertical displacement. Testing on this carousel doesn't mean just for a few hours or a few days. A test here can last months. The carousel constantly rotating, with the wheels travelling at anything up to 100 kilometres an hour, with a thousand horsepower engine powering them, so that years worth of pavement stress and road damage can be built up in weeks. There are actually three different circular test tracks here, and the carousel can be taken apart and moved between them. That way, while a test is happening over here for a few weeks, another track can be torn up and rebuilt for the next set of experiments. And the tracks can be divided into sections to run several different tests at once. One of the tracks is also watertight for testing how pavements behave on wet or soaked ground. And I really hope that the size and scale of this thing is coming across on camera because I've had to change my microphone to the windproof one because of how much turbulent air this thing generates. Those arms are twice my height. They are massive. It is genuinely unnerving to be standing here, not able to see this with just this noise behind me. There are some limitations, of course, because it's an accelerated test. We cannot control the climate conditions. And then there is aging of the bituminous materials. They become more brittle. And obviously we cannot simulate that because we have to do the test in several months. We include one reference section with the material that we know. We can make a comparison with the classical material and correct the results by some coefficients to adapt to real conditions. It's tempting to think that in the 21st century we can test everything by computer modeling and simulation, but those simulations have to be grounded in truth somewhere. You can't build those models without real world data. And when you're dealing with public safety and billion euro infrastructure projects, Sometimes there is no substitute for just building something real.